In this lecture, I'm going to introduce some terminology related to permutation groups, namely orbits, fixed points, and stabilizers. So recall that a permutation group is a subset of permu which satisfies certain properties. It's closed under composition and um, inversion. So let's say G is a permutation group. Then we can talk about a G orbit. A G orbit, uh, well, firstly, let's talk about the G orbit of U. Given U belongs to U, its G orbit is defined as uh, the set G, I'll denote it by G times U which consists of all elements of the form sigma u where sigma belongs to g. Okay, um, and a g orbit is the g or uh, a set which is the orbit of some element of u. So this is called the g orbit of u. And in general, a g orbit is the g orbit of some element of u. Uh, the second definition is that of fixed point given sigma in G, its set of fixed points is denoted usually by U uh, superscript sigma. And this consists of all the elements U in U such that sigma U is equal to U. So these are the points that are fixed by the permutation sigma and the last thing I need to define is uh, the stabilizer of an element given u in u its stabilizer is defined as uh, g subscript u which consists of those sigma in G such that sigma U is equal to U. Okay, and uh, what you can show is that this itself is also a permutation group. Namely, if uh, sigma and uh, tau both take u to u, then of course the composition of sigma and tau will take u to u. And if sigma takes u to u, then sigma inverse will also take u to u. So these are the three basic uh, definitions uh, uh, related to permutation groups. And now uh, let me just state a very fundamental uh, counting result uh, that relates to relates these things. And this is called the orbit stabilizer theorem. It says that, um, suppose G is a permutation group, and uh, U an element of U, then the cardinality of G is equal to the cardinality of the orbit of U times the cardinality of the stabilizer of U. You need to be careful here a bit with the notation. G U looks very similar to G subscript U. So um, be careful which one I'm writing. And the proof is actually very straightforward. Um, so what, what, what you do is um, for every uh, V in the orbit of U, you pick um, an element sigma V in G such that, well, u is in the v is in the orbit of u, so there exists an element sigma v such that sigma v of u is equal to v. And now, define a function using the sigma v. We'll define a function um, phi from g u cross g u to g by saying that. If I take the point V 
and an element sigma naught in gu then this should map to uh, sigma v composed with sigma naught okay i claim that this phi is a bijection so firstly let's check uh, injectivity So suppose we have that, um, you know, sigma v sigma naught is equal to sigma v prime sigma naught prime. Then we need to show that v is equal to v prime and sigma naught is equal to sigma naught prime. So applying to u, what do we get? We get sigma v sigma naught u is equal to sigma v prime sigma naught u uh, sigma naught prime u but we know that sigma naught u is uh, equal to uh, u because sigma naught is in g subscript u it's in the stabilizer and so what we get here is u and then the sigma v of u but we know that sigma v of u is v and sigma v prime of u is v prime and so this because these are equal, this must imply that V is equal to V prime. Okay, so what we know is that sigma V sigma naught is equal to sigma V sigma naught prime. But now just by cancellation, we get that sigma naught is equal to sigma prime. So we get that if sigma V sigma naught is equal to sigma V prime sigma naught prime, then V is equal to V prime and sigma naught is equal to sigma naught prime, proving the injectivity of the map phi. Now let's prove the surjectivity. So given any uh, arbitrary sigma, let's try to find a V and a sigma naught. So show that it's in the image of um, it's in the image of phi. So the V it's easy to guess. Let V be just a sigma of U. Uh, then what we have is that uh, sigma V inverse. If I take sigma V inverse, so V is sigma of U. Uh, and so let's take sigma V. Sigma V of u is v so sigma v inverse of v is u so sigma v uh, inverse sigma of u is sigma v inverse of v which is equal to u so if i let sigma naught to be sigma v inverse sigma then this belongs to g subscript u and moreover sigma is equal to well we have uh, sigma v inverse sigma is sigma naught multiplying both sides of this identity by sigma v on the left what we get is sigma is equal to sigma v sigma naught showing that phi is subjective and that completes the proof of the um, orbit stabilizer theorem.